Welcome back to my walkthrough of the Python Standard Library. This time we are going to look at a whole family of string methods that you've probably seen before, but you haven't thought much about. So, or at least I haven't thought much about them. So s equals a, b, c, d. Now I've got a string, and if I, in Jupyter here, say s dot tab, is tab, it's going to show me all the methods that begin with is, and you can see there, there is, haha, a lot of methods like that. I want to walk through all these methods and see what each of them does. So is alnum, is alnum, what does this mean? Well, let's take a look. Help on is alnum, this means is it alphanumeric? And so it's gonna tell us basically if all the characters of the string are alphanumeric. So what if I say here, s equals a, b, c, d, right? s is alnum, the answer is true. How about s equals a, b, c, one, two, three? s is alnum, the answer is true. What if I say s equals a, b, c, space, one, two, three? Now s is alnum is going to be false because it contains a space character as well. What if I have a non-ASCII uh, character? What if I say s equals, let's do here, I'll do another, here we go, um, one, two, three, I'll take out the space, one, two, three. Now if I say s is alnum, the answer is true. So all Unicode characters that are considered to be characters, or that's to say like printable characters, are considered to be alphanumeric for our purposes. So things like spaces, things like punctuation will give us, um, or, or new lines, will be not, uh, will not be accepted, will return false. S, what's our next one here, is alpha. Well S is alpha is going to be a little more restrictive, so here if we say is 1, 2, 3, and shalom, it's going to say false because it contains numbers. But what if I return the three numbers from there, let's get rid of those numbers a little hard with the, you know, right to left thing, there we go. Now if I do it, it's gonna be true. Once again, Unicode characters, even if they're not ASCII, even if they're not English characters, Latin characters, they are considered to be alphanumeric. Well, actually I just did al num, and I wanna say alpha, and we still get a true there. True, okay. Now, what if I say s dot is, what's our third one? Is ASCII. Well, is ASCII gonna be true here? No, this is gonna be false. It's really gonna to check to see if it's ASCII. S equals A, B, C, space, 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 one, two, three, four, even backslash N, S is ASCII. We can find out that it is true. All right, so that's gonna tell us whether it's in that restricted list there. S is decimal, okay. Now we're gonna get into all sorts of fun stuff. We have is digit, is numeric, and is decimal. Is digit, is numeric, and is decimal. Let's do all three of these together. So if I say here s equals one, two, three, four, okay, it is gonna be true for all of these. S is digit, s is numeric, and s is decimal. And a lot of people sort of wonder why do we need all three of these? They are different. Notice, by the way, that all these are string methods, like all the other methods we're talking about here. So you can't run is digit on an integer. This is basically asking the question, can I turn this thing into an integer? Okay, so what is the difference between them? So is numeric is basically asking the question, if I have something, well, let's see, let me try this. Each of them is true for zero through nine. That is not an issue. The question is, if you are using a language other than uh, um, English, in which you have words or characters that represent numbers. So what if I say here s equals, and then I'm gonna go into Chinese, I'm gonna say e r. Okay, whoops, let's type that a little better, there we go. So now I have three characters for one, two, and three in Chinese. s is digit, this is not gonna be true, I cannot turn this you know, into an int. But is, is, s is numeric is true because these are numeric characters in their original language. And s is decimal, this will be false as well. All right, how often are you gonna encounter this? I don't think very often, but you can see that is numeric basically deals with these other uh, languages. What about is decimal? What's the deal with that? Well, what if I have something like this? I say s equals, we're gonna say two plus, now I'm gonna use a Unicode character, Unicode, 0, 0, B2. What do we have here? Look, it's two to the second power. S is digit. That is true. S is numeric. Numeric. Oops, helps to say that. S is numeric, true. And S is decimal is false because Okay, it's all digits, and okay, it's all numeric, but that second two there is not a decimal number, it's an exponent, and so we can't think of it that way. Onward, s is, what else do we have here? Well, we've got is identifier. So is identifier basically says, 
could I use this as a Python variable or function name? So if I say here, s equals x, s is, uh, s is identifier, true. I can use x as a variable name. Bad idea, but you can do it. How about s equals a, b, c, d, e, f? s is identifier. Yeah. How about s equals a, b, c, 1, 2, 3? s is identifier, is identifier. That's good too. But what if I switch that around? 1, 2, 3, and then ABC, then is identifier is going to say, no, you can't do that because you can't have an identifier start with a number. What if I say S equals ABC minus DEF? Nope, that's not okay. You're not allowed to have a minus sign inside of a Python uh, variable name or in, if I, in, in the middle of a Python uh, identifier. So that's not good. What if I say S equals DEF? S is identifier? The answer is true. This is a legal identifier. It's just a keyword in Python, so you will encounter an error. You can't say def equals five. If you do that, bad news for the language. All right, and there are other ways to find out if it's a keyword, but this is not one of them. S is, what else do we have here? Well, we've done alum, alnum, alpha, ASCII, decimal, digit, identifier, is lower and is upper, as you can imagine, is lower. Let me say here, S equals ABC is lower. It's going to be, is it all lowercase? S equals ABC is, S is lower. It's going to be false. Oops, helps to actually use the right syntax there. And of course, we have an is upper as well. So I can say here, S dot is upper, and that's going to return that as well. S is, what else do we have here? Printable and space. So if we say here is printable, sure enough, S is printable. But if I say S equals ABC space DF, S is printable, what's that going to say? What, what do you think? S is printable. Actually, that's going to say yes, because space characters are printable. So what would be unprintable? Well, what if I say S equals backslash N, S is printable is now going to be false, because we don't see the explicit backslash N there. That's a little bit of a tricky one. S is space, that's going to be true. And is space basically says, does it only contain white space? So S equals space, 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 new lines, tabs, you know, vertical tabs. S is space is going to be true. All these things are white space characters. S is, we're almost at the end here, title. And title's the last one is title. So if I say here S equals, this is a test, S is title, it'll say, no, that's not. What does it mean to be a title? It means that each of the words begins with a capital letter. So if I say now S equals this is a test, S is title is going to be true. What if I say S equals this is uh, um, two tests, S is title. It's going to say false because that two is not a capitalized two. Wait, there is no capitalized two. Right, so if you have numbers in there, bad news. So this is my quick little exploration through all the is methods in the string class in Python. I actually use these all the time, some more than others. Um, is digit I use all the time. Okay, the others uh, maybe a little less, but they're actually really useful in looking through things. I should also say that if you're not a big fan of regular expressions, then some of these can be quite useful, especially is space. I do use that. Okay, onward to more of the standard library.